Today we're going to be talking about colour theory and how it can make your painting pop. Hi guys, my name's SBJ and today we're going to be talking about colour theory. Off the bat, let's talk about why colour theory is important. The main thing with colour theory is that it allows you to know what colours work well together in certain aspects. Uh, and the two main things I'm going to be talking about are your contrasting colours and your accent colours. Now your contrasting colours are colours that are the complete opposite end of the colour spectrum and they help make your models, your miniatures pop with uh, the particular parts of them. And then your accent colours are colours that tend to go with the colour that you're using. Now when you're using whites, blacks and greys you tend to have quite a vast pool to work from within that. But when you're using uh, your yellows, your, your reds, your blues and stuff like that you're your area of what you can use sort of goes down quite a bit. Now by the end of this video I'm going to show you how we can use this colour theory that we are learning today and using it on the models that we've already started painting and uh, what sort of colours we could put on there if we wanted to to help make that sort of pop happen. Now where some of the colour schemes that we're using are based off uh, Horus Heresy designs, armour colours and stuff like that, there will be some that we're sort of almost steered into but the reason we're steered into that is because when these armor palettes were designed they were designed with a particular color scheme in mind because they used color theory so what we're going to do let's go and have a look at the infographic that's uh, been provided by the internet and we'll talk you through it now as i said i'm going to be talking you through this graphic that uh, has been provided and uh, while some of this will uh, help the army colors that we're choosing hopefully it helps you understand using colour theory and other things that you do, so whether that's designing graphics or trying to uh, simulate things for websites and things like that, that's what the main colour theory is. But for me, as I said, the idea of using the contrasting colours is a big thing. So let's first of all take a look at a normal colour wheel. Okay, so we're looking at this colour wheel here and you can see that you've got your primary colours, your secondary colours and your tertiary colours. Now, the main reason I wanted to show this to you is, and is that when you're painting armies and things like that, there's certain things that you want to use that will pop and they don't necessarily clash with the armour that you're using. And that's not saying that all of these do clash, but there's certain colours that just work with the army. And there's a reason you see um, certain base colours uh, sort of on the bases of models versus the armour colour. And I'm going to use the Alpha Legion Blue and Ultramarines in, in this particular uh, description. And you see a lot of Alpha Legion armies with that beautiful blue where they're using orange. Now the reason that orange works so well is because with blue you you need to look at a colour that is a secondary colour that doesn't use blue to make that contrasting effect. Now you want it to stand out and you want it to be good but you don't necessarily want it to take away from what you've already done with your beautiful colour work. So looking at the secondary colours you've obviously got purple, green and orange. Now green and purple have got blue in them. But if you have a look at orange, it uses red and yellow. So you're using a colour that doesn't contain the initial colour that you're using and it creates that contrasting colour. So it's the direct other end of the spectrum, it's got no blue in it so it's quite a stark contrast. Now you see a lot of Alpha Legion armies using orange basing to simulate Mars and stuff like that, uh, but also it's a fantastic colour to use when you're doing things like plasma, uh, which if you don't know is a type of weapon uh, used in the game uh, and it gives off a glow effect and it's something that a lot of painters use to sort of add a, a little bit of interest on the model. Now you can use this on Volkite as well, uh, but the reason that it works so well with orange is because it doesn't contain any blue. So let's look at a different example of that and have a look at something like salamanders. Now salamanders are green, which is a secondary colour. So let's have a look at the primary colour that isn't used to make green and why that will be effective to help make it pop. Now, when you're using a secondary colour, it somehow opens up a broader scale of what you can use to really make things pop. But let's have a look at the principles of this. So we have a look at green, uh, which uses blue and yellow to make that colour. So then we sort of come across this area where we go, OK, so we don't use any colours that contain yellow or blue for now. So we have a look at red. Now you don't use red to to make green, or you could do to add particular shades, but that's 
that's besides the point. So you look at red and red suddenly becomes that really nice contrast in color to work with your green. So then if you're doing plasma, you can start using reds and things like that. However, you can start using the secondary colors that feature red to help pop a little bit more. This is where it gets a little bit complicated. So if you follow, perfect. So then with green, you can start using oranges and because it contains that red, it's still keeping that beautiful contrast in color, but using orange where it has a little bit of yellow in it, it still works. Now you want it to be a more red orange than a yellow orange, but that's why the flames on a salamander's uh, color scheme works really, really well because it has that part of red in it and you've not gone too much back towards the green for the yellow. So as you go round this color wheel, you can see you've got the red, red, orange, orange, yellow, orange, yellow, yellow, green, green. And that's sort of like this blending scale of how to make that work. Likewise, I haven't seen it done, but you could use purple or red violet. So this is where you're heading now towards the blue. So you go red, red, violet, violet, blue, violet, blue, blue, green, green. And this allows you to use the red, violet and the violet as other colors to accent that green. And it creates this really nice contrasting color that you could use on things like plasmas and volkites, or you could use uh, the reds and the oranges to help create that nice little glow effect while still making it something that's popping. This isn't to say that you can't use yellow, green, yellow, yellow, orange, or blue, green, blue, blue, violet, and things like that. They work, but they become more of an accent color rather than a contrasting color. And the further away you get from green, the more contrast it provides you. Okay, so now let's look at a red color scheme color palette. So with this, we're basically doing the opposite of what we've just done with the salamanders. You're using red as the primary color, and green suddenly becomes a really nice color that you can use for your plasmas, your glows, and things like that. This also re works really well when it comes to things like headlights on tanks, uh, lights and things like that. If you're using a red color scheme, you, you could use a yellow or a blue, but if you really want to make it pop, you do your headlights green. Once again, not saying you can't use these things, but it's just the theory of what suddenly becomes very nice to use. So for example, when you're using red, you don't want to use the colors that are closest to it. So if I had a red tank, I wouldn't necessarily want to use an orange or a violet color to do those lights. I'd want to go as far away from that as possible. So when you come to things like blue and yellow as a primary color, that's where you get that magic point where you can go, I could use a yellow and a blue as a nice contrasting or accent color for these headlights. But if I go green, I'm going for the direct opposite of what I've used. And you use that for your volkite glow, your plasma glow, any type of glow that you want to use. Um, and it helps accentuate those parts and it makes them pop. But at the same time, your mind sits there and goes, well, this looks great because your mind's going, there's no red in that green. So it's making it work a lot better. That's my little tidbit about what colors can work with other colors. You can have a look at the color wheel that's on the screen now uh, and I'll let you pick. This isn't to say that you can't do any of these colors. It just seems to work so much better in the ways that you're doing it. So for example, if you have a yellow Imperial Fists army, you could use violet as your opposite color because violet, purple, doesn't contain any yellow. It contains red and blue. So then you've got that nice broad spectrum of where you can use those type of colors and it'll pop even more on your yellow. Okay, so using all of those little tips and tricks that we learned from having a look at the color wheel, we can have a look and see what colors would possibly work with these particular color swatches. Now, because a lot of this is being used on tanks and the colors resemble certain ones that are used by different Horus Heresy legions, that doesn't mean that you have to use these colors uh, and you're sort of you're sort of already locked into the particular colors, but there's certain ones that you can use. Likewise, if you're using it on wagons and stuff from model railways, if you are modeling things that are brands that already exist or wagons that already exist, then you already pretty much have your color palette already sorted. However, if you're going freelance or freestyle and you want to do your own thing, then you can totally do that by using this method. So 
just having a look here, we've obviously got the red. Now, as we found out, the opposite to red would be the green. So if you wanted to do some contrasting colors on your plasmas and your lights and stuff, you could use this green to do so. Likewise, you could do the same over here. Now, with yellow, the opposite color was purple. Uh, I don't have a purple here so I can't necessarily show you, but you could use that purple on your headlights and things. Now it's not the traditional colour you'd see on headlights on these tanks, but if you wanted to have it so it would pop, you could use that. Likewise, you could use purple on your Volkites, your plasmas and things like that. Any accenty bits that you're not sure what colour to use, you can always use these particular contrasting colours to hopefully make it pop. Now with black and white, let's turn these around here. Now with black and white you sort of already have the well i guess the world's your oyster really because you have the blank the most blankest of blank canvases that you could use now because i've used a hue of blue on whilst doing this white you could use uh, an orange or a red to sort of complement that uh, and in fact the white scars army uses reds a lot as one of their colors which makes it exceedingly useful because you know that that's already sorted for you and it will go really nicely with the blue black once again you've got the dark angels and they use red as a primary color as well as white uh, and also you have got the raven guard who use white as one of their colors so it's that sort of yin and yang type thing uh, yellow would be the purple blue would be an orange so once again if you sort of have a look at adding in these colors you're creating a sort of accent for you now with these metallics you can use whatever colour you want and as I've said before if you were doing an Iron Warriors scheme they use chevrons which are a yellow to sort of go in with that so you can use all of the things that are laid out before you but it gives you a rough idea of what you can use to make this pop now since the last video I've gone in and painted the black parts in here just to sort of help dissipate the colours so so you're not looking at one complete colour except for the black because obviously I painted black on black um, you could go in and airbrush these parts by masking up. Um, the Sons of Horus use a dark red as their accent colour in there, so you can use that. Um, and then you can start using metallics and stuff as well. So with the Thousand Suns, they're red, but their but their other colours that they use are white and gold. Um, and then if you look at the Alpha Legion type colours, they use a silver as their trim. But if you were doing Ultramarines, you're looking at a gold for your trim. Um, and you, you can sort of use those along the way and try and find out ways to make it work for you. Now, hopefully this has been a useful video for you and you've managed to get a rough idea of what sort of colours you would like to use in the future. Uh, if you're looking to create extra accents and things like that on your models, then you definitely can and you can use these methods. Now, in the next video, what I'm going to be doing is I am going to be glossing these and I'm going to start doing transfers and weathering is the next step. Now off camera I did actually paint all the wheels on the tanks with typhus corrosion and I did the same with exhausts. Now if I'm not glossing these that's perfect I can go on but what I should have done is waited until I had weathered I had at least done transfers before doing that but that doesn't mean you can't do that if you're not looking to gloss varnish any of this. But for the next process, we're going to gloss, varnish, uh, we are going to add transfers and we're going to start adding weathering. So hopefully you learned something from this video. It wasn't a lot of doing, but more of looking at different things that are available to us. So there we have it. We've talked about different colour theory methods that you can use. And hopefully you've walked away with something a little bit different and something that you can use on your models, trains, Warhammer, whatever you're doing. If you've enjoyed this video, please leave a comment down below uh, and if you are following along let me know otherwise thank you very very much for watching and i hope you look forward to the next one and i'll see you guys again soon thanks very much